it's another assembly video with Emma, and today we're going to be assembling Smengel, our limited edition Plague Angel. So this is a re-sculpt of one of our oldest and most popular models, the Plague Angel. There are limited quantities of this particular sculpt, and each one comes with a numbered art card. There will be more in the future, but they will have different parts and be a different edition. So first, make sure that you have all of the parts in front of you, as always. You'll notice that there are a lot more supportive shims on these parts, particularly in the wings. Under each of the wingtips, there is a supportive shim just to keep it in a nice shape and along his spine. So be careful when you're removing these. Additionally, on the horns, there are some nails, which would not be possible without these shims. So it is a little extra work to remove them, but it does keep a really nice look for the nails. Be really careful when you're doing this because if you clip it wrong, you can bend the nails and break them. You'll even see that I accidentally bent one, but I didn't break it luckily. So just be really careful with how much material you're removing at once. Remove little bits at a time. I was even a little too generous with my material removal here. There you go, see I bent that one, but it survived. And then obviously clean up with your knife. It doesn't take too much time. Obviously there's a bit more time added with the extra shims, but the look at the end is really nice. And I find that I don't have to sand to get a smooth look. So first we're going to start with our base. Give that plenty of time to dry while we're assembling the rest. Be generous with your glue here. You don't really have to spread it because when you push the piece down, it will spread it for you. But I always like to do a little bit of spreading so it takes less drying time. All right, so let's set that aside to dry and we're going to work on the body next. See, I removed all of that material from the spine. So make sure you test fit the legs and we'll also be test fitting the loin cloth and the booty cloth <laughs> at this point. Uh, just to make sure that everything clicks into place without bumping into each other in weird places. So test all of the parts that are going to be touching each other against each other at this point. So the legs to the loincloth, the legs to the booty, and just make sure that it, there aren't any major gaps being created when they're in contact with each other. I found the stage to be particularly integral for this model, just because of all of these interconnecting parts. And I'm also going to be pinning these legs for extra stability. This means I really don't want to run into any trouble later while I'm trying to make the pinning work. That's already a challenge in itself. So just in case you haven't pinned the model before, I'm showing the process that I do. I grabbed the wrong drill bit from work, so it's a little too big for my purposes, but it ended up being a bit of a blessing in disguise because it made me have to be less exact with my placement of the holes. <laughs> and by that, I mean the pin could just shift a little while I was connecting it. So using putty like this is very helpful to find the correct angle and where to place your hole on the other part that you will be pinning it to. It's obviously very important to make sure the holes match up as much as possible. The angle is also very important. As you can see there, this part of the leg is thinner. so. You have to be careful not to drill all the way through. So drill slowly and check in as often as possible to make sure that you haven't gone too far. So now I'm adding the pin, which is just paperclip, <laughs> and put a bit of glue on there, put it in the hole, and then I let it dry and clip it off so that it's short enough to go in the other hole. And now I'm just scoring the connection points to add a little more stability. I really want these legs to stick on tightly at this part. And the reason why is because when you're attaching the feet to the base, you're going to have to just slightly ship the legs. It's very hard to get it exact and avoid that. So if it's strong at this point, then it won't pop off while you're attaching the feet to the base. Hold it in place until it's dry. I sped this up, obviously. And then check the loincloths again. Mine are looking great, so I can move on. But if you do find that yours aren't fitting as nicely, you can always use a little heat just to bend it. 
And with this next leg, I'm not going to show you as much as I did with the first, because hopefully by now you know my pinning process. But it's the same concept as the other one. The only thing that I found was that this leg was a bit thinner than the other one, so I had to be more careful when drilling. Just make sure that you don't go through, as that is a nightmare to fix. I've been told. I've never made the mistake myself. <laughs> Be careful when clipping if you're also using a paper clip, just because it is a bit of a thicker wire. It can damage your clippers if you don't clip it closer to the pivot screw, so keep it away from the tip. And again, I'm scoring just for that extra hold. And then we're just going to let this dry, and the next parts that we will look at are the calves and the base. So we're going to make sure these fit nicely. They're all cleaned, so they pop nicely in there, and I did let this dry a bit before testing this part, just because I don't want to damage the integrity of the legs, but yeah, they look good. So now that those legs have dried a bit more, I'm going to test the loincloth, make sure that fits, and then make sure that all of these other parts are fitting nicely, make sure they're all cleaned up. These will be attached soon. And I'm going to be pinning the right arm, again, for stability here. Out of all of the models I've assembled so far, this one definitely has the most parts that are connecting to multiple other parts. When you attach the scythe weapon, it just puts pressure on both his arms, so it's good to pin it. And now we're going to test the top of his scythe, speaking of the scythe, and glue it. Whoops, I threw my paper clip. <laughs> but this is the easiest part really to assemble, so I have no more tips. And before you attach this part, I do recommend that you test what it looks like against the body. Just make sure that it's not bent at a weird angle. You could pin this to give it some extra stability, but I was just kind of sick of pinning things at this point. <laughs> so I was like, it's fine. We've taken a long enough break for this to dry, so now I'm going to attach the calves. Just like his thighs, I pinned and scored the connection points to make them strong, and then I'm gluing them in place. If you want to be minimal with your pinning, I would say that this part is more important to pin than the thigh, just because this will receive more pressure while you're slotting it into the base. That being said, I only scored the right knee because I didn't feel that it needed a pin given the nub length at the connection point. And now before we attach it to the base, you need to attach these loincloths. It would be hellish to attach them afterwards. Just have to maneuver around all of the base and everything. The back cloth didn't fit as nicely as I wanted it to here. You can see that the top is popping up a bit. So I used my hairdryer to bend it before I glued it on here. I just put the hairdryer on it for 30-ish seconds and then slightly bent it until it fit nicely. So we're gonna let this dry and test fit the wings while we're waiting. With the wings, you might also need to use some heat just at the bottom there, if you want it to fit flush. I didn't need heat for this set of wings, but for the first assembly I did, it was not as flush as I wanted it to be. So just that tip at the bottom can sometimes bend, but it's an easy fix. And now we're going to do the head. So you need to attach the face to the hair, and then we're gonna put the horns on. And of course, make sure you test fit to the body before you commit with this, or at least test fit before you attach the horns. Just make sure that it fits nicely in the neck. Now with these horns, I didn't put enough glue on the left one. So you'll see that it ends up popping off when I put the wings on later. It's an easy fix, but obviously just try to get it right the first time. Learn from my mistakes. In hindsight, I would have applied the glue on the horn instead of in the socket on this one. There we go. I just wanted to show you that on my first assembly job, I did manage to keep the nails longer, and this one I didn't, so just be careful when you're cleaning those nails. <laughs> and I'm attaching the head now. This is just because if I attached after the base or the wings, they would get in the way and just be a bit of a headache. <laughs> so now we're going to attach the body to the base. Oh, we've got the face on there and it's all dry. It should click into place. You may notice a bit of creakiness on the knees. <laughs> I certainly did, but it fits, yay. 
all of my pinning went to plan. And now we're moving on to the side. I'm attaching the left arm. I ended up pinning this one at the shoulder just because that part will have more tension on it. But I didn't pin at the wrist here just because the nub that goes in that hole is big enough to kind of act as a pin. So here we go with the side. Check the fit. And again, this would be another point to make sure that it's not bent. Strangely, you can use heat to make it the right angle. And I've got the pin in there and you'll see that it just adds extra support up at the shoulder. I didn't feel that I needed a pin down at the bottom for the right hand. As long as you've got that shoulder in the socket there, then you can just kind of maneuver the right hand to the right position and then just hold it in place until the glue cures. I'm sorry that I kind of took this out of the frame a bit. It was really hard to make sure that it was in the right spot while also making sure that you could see it properly. But there we go, that's the side. So now we're going to attach this little dead dangly body to the wing. It's not very obvious exactly where it goes, but if you look at my angle, hopefully that will help you. And once it's in the place, it's just like clicks right into that place. So you'll know it's on the very edge of the wing. And then while that dries, we're going to attach the left wing. For this, you could also pin the wings. That's probably recommended, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to magnetize them. Oh, there you go. There's what I was talking about earlier, <laughs> but I wasn't sure if I wanted to magnetize them. So I just put some light glue on and I might magnetize them later just to make it easier to travel with. But yeah. Um, while you're pressing these wings on, be careful not to press on the face, obviously, like I did. <laughs> and we have to add this flag at the bottom. Again, sorry about my angles. It's very difficult to keep it in the frame with the weight of the wings at this point. But hopefully you can see what's happening. And we're almost done. We're just adding these last bits of detail. So now this little flaggy bit that hangs from his shoulder to his elbow. I had to look closely to make sure it was in the right spot. So I did it off camera, but there you go. <laughs> Our last two little bodies. This one lines up with these chains here on the side and then the other one it goes in the back of this corner which is a little less obvious but hopefully you can figure it out. It fits nicely. There we go and there we go and make sure that the angle is right so that it's dangling straight down towards the base. And that's our smangle done. Hopefully you found these tips helpful and you're able to assemble him but if you need any further assistance, you can always reach out to us on our socials or support at creaturecaster.com and we will help you make this beauty happen. Thanks for watching.